Welcome. We have Carly with us today to talk to us about Israelite identity. Carly, identity is a major topic in our world. Um, ethnic uh, identity, religious identity, national identity immediately come to mind. What do we mean when we say Israelite identity? Well, that's a really good question. And when we say Israelite identity, we might mean any one of those things. So Israelite identity is particularly tied up with uh, the worship of the one God, Yahweh. So it's very much a religious identity. There is a significant argument amongst scholars of nationalist identities in general, as historians of nationalist identities, whether or not something resembling nationalist identity exists in the ancient world. Often uh, the biblical texts and the Israelites who then become the Jews are often pointed to as perhaps one of the very earliest national identities. But because that's a bit of a, a complicated, a bit fraught topic, um, partly to do with whether or not there are territorial claims, government claims, whether there's a state involved there, it's perhaps a bit more uh, sensible, more reasonable to talk about ethnic identity in the ancient context when we talk about Israelite identity. Okay. So if we talk about Israelite ethnic identity, now ethnic identity is a um, major topic <laughs> in anthropology, <laughs> and we could probably talk all day just on what ethnicity and ethnic identities involve. But they often uh, are focused especially around cultural sorts of expressions. So things like, um, how do you eat? What do you eat? Um, how do you dress? Who are you allowed to marry? Mm. Um, what kinds of religious practices do you engage in? Um, who are your gods? So those are the sorts of things which often get picked up um, as key points in ethnic identities. And we see that too with Israelite ethnic identity, issues about uh, what the Israelites eat, um, who they eat with, who they can marry, um, the way they dress, um, and other sorts of cultural expressions and cultural practices which come to characterize Israelite ethnic identity. Okay, so when in Israelite history do we see identity issues arise, or is there a time in Israelite history where we see this arise? Well, there are a number of times when Israelite identity issues seem to be particularly prominent. And amongst scholarship, there's a tendency to focus especially on the very early period, so say the 12th to 10th centuries, um, at the very beginning and formation of something resembling Israel, and also to focus on the exilic period, so the period in which some of the elites from Judah are exiled into Babylon, mm. and therefore surrounded by um, other people and become more attuned to their own ethnic identities, and the post-exilic period when there's a similar kind of um, very strong sense that the Israelites are surrounded by other people and so become very aware of their own identity. But in between that, you know, we don't have four or five hundred years <laughs> where nothing happens in Israelite <laughs> identity. Um, and in fact, in the pre-exilic period, so during the monarchy um, in Judah, is also a very important period for the formation of Israelite identity. And part of that is to do with the fact that Judah and Jerusalem during that period are part of an ancient Near Eastern, um, Southern Levantine um, world, political, geographical, social, economic world in which they're exposed to outsiders at a remarkable frequency and intensity. And this kind of exposure to different kinds of cultural experience, different kinds of cultural practice, um, is the kind of, of context which tends to make groups particularly aware of their own ethnic identities. So Carly, where in the Hebrew Bible do we see these ideas? Well, I suppose the short answer to that question is just about everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so for example, we get them uh, throughout the Pentateuch. So a lot of the patriarchal narratives in Genesis mm -hmm. are concerned with identity. Um, in Exodus, concerns and ways of articulating uh, Israelite Hebrew identity vis-a-vis -vis the Egyptians. Um, in Leviticus, we get um, you know, concerns about Israelite identity, particularly in the context of priesthood. Um, we get the Book of Ruth is from the post-exilic period, um, concerned about whether or not uh, an outsider to the community may be permitted um, as uh, 
a, a convert, a someone who's then allowed into the Israelite community. So we see it all over the biblical texts. Maybe one of the most prominent texts, which is a focus of Israelite identity, is the book of Deuteronomy, where we have a text which is very much in the midst of trying to define and cr to create what it means to be an Israelite. And so that takes a number of different kinds of forms. So we mentioned earlier about uh, the focus on the Israelites' own particular God. That's very much a key, if not the key, characteristic of what it means to be an Israelite, is that you worship this one God. Um, Deuteronomy is also doing a number of other sorts of interesting things trying to help formulate the Israelite community and Israelite ethnic identity. Um, it brings the Israelites together around a single cult site uh, three times a year for, for offerings and celebrations and festivals. Um, it talks a lot about uh, things that the Israelites are supposed to do because the other Israelites are their brothers. So the idea of a, an ethnic community as an extended family is a very prominent aspect of ethnic identities. Uh, so there's a number of different sorts of features of Deuteronomy which pick up on religious aspects, um, cultural aspects, um, community, expressions of kinship, um, expressions of cultic activities, um, proximity, trying to bring the community physically together, um, where we see this kind of concern and issues um, and interest in Israelite identity. So can studying Israelite identity help us understand our present world in, in any way? Yes, I, th I think it can. I mean, on, at first glance, it looks maybe very distant and very, very alien. But once we start getting into the text, what we find is that this concern for the community and what characterizes a community is very consistent. I mean, so these texts are describing a community which is you know, well over 2,000 years old, and yet it's focused on a number of the same kinds of concerns. You know, how do you dress? What kinds of food do you eat? Can you marry somebody from a different community? I mean, that's perhaps a very prominent one that we see um, on a fairly regular basis throughout a lot of, of the contemporary world. Um, whether we think of that um, as, you know, someone from a different nation, a different, uh, different ethnic, identity, a different religious identity. All these kinds of issues are still very much part of uh, our contemporary world. And I think uh, reading and understanding these ancient texts can help us reflect a bit more carefully and a bit more closely on the kinds of concerns which we now have and the way we make decisions about, about those kinds of questions. Thank you, Carly.